So when people come and they have been chronically on opiates for a long time for pain management and it's no longer being effective due to hyperalgesia, tolerance, withdrawal symptoms, it's very useful to change them almost immediately from their short-acting opiate that they're taking for the pain management to buprenorphine. The reason is when you give buprenorphine and somebody's in mild to moderate withdrawal, you relieve the withdrawal symptoms with the buprenorphine, which is a partial agonist. But at the same time, when you stop the buprenorphine, the withdrawal syndrome from it is only about half the severity of what you'd have from a short-acting opiate. So that means you've immediately converted the patient from a high level of dependence with a very significant unpleasant syndrome. Not that opiate withdrawal is going to kill you, but it's in fact a very unpleasant, bad case of the flu. And you've got a good start and you can get that done within a day. What then happens next is now that they're on buprenorphine, you can stop it after as little as a day or two, and you then want to start the actual uh, medical withdrawal procedure. And the way you do that is you stop the buprenorphine, you can expect within 24 hours that they'll start having withdrawal symptoms again, but before they start having them, you would be giving them lefexidine. Now, lefexidine is, again, an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist. It relieves opiate withdrawal symptoms. You need to give it four times a day, but the dosage you give is fixed. So it's a set dosage that you give that dosage for over the five to seven days of the withdrawal syndrome, although we're now going to talk about how you can make that withdrawal syndrome shorter. And the way you make the withdrawal syndrome shorter is now that you've given them a day of lefexidine and they've now come off the buprenorphine, you could start giving them a very low dose of naltrexone. Now, naltrexone is ordinarily given at 50 milligrams a day as a way to block other opiates and keep you opiate free. However, what you're going to do is give it at a low dose. A typical low dose would be 5 milligrams. Now, 5 milligrams is 10% of a 50 milligram pill, and there's various ways to get to that dose. Compounding pharmacy might be one way. Trying to cut the pill up into a tenth of a pill is generally fairly difficult. So what I typically suggest is it dissolves in water very easily, that you simply dissolve it in a fixed amount of water, and then if you want to give five milligram dose, and you just dissolve 50 milligrams in 10 mLs of water, I think you can figure out on your own how much mLs of water you would then give them that has the naltrexone in it to get the five milligrams. You're then going to be continuing that lefexidine for the next two or three days, and as long as five to seven days if you want. Uh, but the next day, after the five milligrams, you're going to give a bigger dose of naltrexone. And that bigger dose could typically be 10 to 15 milligrams. Uh, usually it would be 10. The NOS, now, the third day, you would give them 15 to 25 milligrams of naltrexone. 25 milligrams of naltrexone is equivalent to 50 milligrams of naltrexone in terms of complete blockade of opiate receptors. So at that point, they are effectively opiate free. And what the naltrexone has done for you that's greatly reduced the duration of withdrawal is it acts to bring normal opiate receptors to the surface of the cell which is something that otherwise will take several days to occur to sometimes a week and a half. But naltrexone will have that process, that receptor trafficking process, happen within typically 30 minutes or so. So you'll get all of these new, very sensitive receptors on the surface of the cell, so beta endorphin and other endogenous neurotransmitters that relieve withdrawal and make you feel better. So they're now able to be effective because you, instead of desensitized receptors, you've got active, new, very much active receptors for the disorder. We would usually switch them over to the buprenorphine on a Thursday and then, uh, or Wednesday sometimes, depending upon why, because they're, while they're on buprenorphine, they're not having any withdrawal and they're typically feeling fine. Um, and then when we stop the buprenorphine, which could either be um, Friday or, yeah, Friday would usually be the day we'd stop it. And on that day, we are giving them uh, the lefexidine. We've actually often started the lefexidine while still on the buprenorphine. And then <clears throat> we'll start giving the naltrexone. If we want to accelerate it to three days, what we're usually doing is 
the day that they're getting the buprenorphine, they're also getting some lefexidine on that day. So that would be, say, a Friday. And then by Saturday, they're then getting five milligrams of naltrexone, and they're also getting the lefexidine continuing. And then by Sunday, we usually are taking them up to the 15 milligrams of naltrexone, plus the lefexidine is continuing. The buprenorphine has long since been, you know, two days of discontinued. And, and when Monday comes, we'll continue the lefexidine out for another two to three days, but they're getting the 25 milligrams of oral naltrexone. At that point, <clears throat> if they, you know, no withdrawal symptoms or anything, we could give them the injection of naltrexone, which will last a month. The second day that they get the naltrexone is the day that they start to notice the naltrexone and that they'll feel some withdrawal symptoms. Sometimes it's the first day, and those are the days in which we usually will give them some benzodiazepine in addition to the lefexidine. The uh, benzodiazepine will help them sleep at night, which is usually when they're taking it, and will also relieve some of the anxiety that they have. Mm -hmm.